So there's a brand new Fiat 500 and it's all electric and it's actually sort of great and you may not have even heard of it. You see, although this fella is selling all over Europe and selling well, it hasn't made its way stateside just yet but it sounds like that might change soon, or at least we hope so. What's up, motorheads, and welcome back to Gearbox Pizza. We're gonna be talking about this itty bitty electric Italian, or, or is it Italian electric? And anyway, it's small, but it's usable. I'm about six foot two, and I had a lease on one of the old ones, and for the money, it was sort of hard to beat. All right, so speaking of the old one, as far as I can remember, it was only available in some select markets because well, it was a compliance car. All right, so what is a compliance car, you say? Well, in some states and regions, automakers had to offer an alternative fuel vehicle to comply with some strict regulations. Oftentimes, it meant converting a gas car to electric and just selling them for a loss, which was, well, was pretty much exactly what Fiat did with the original 500e. And boy, were there some deals to be had on these things. And I actually leased one of these to use as a commuter car. And now, look, this was several years ago, and I had like a 30 something mile commute each way to of the office. Long story short, I was spending something like 250 bucks a month on gas, and I leased one of these for under 200 bucks a month. So, total no brainer. Now, I wasn't really expecting much for that money. But what I can say is I actually really like this thing. And yeah, I know it was tiny and the back seats were basically unusable, but I fit just fine and it was comfortable enough, right? And most importantly, it got me into that carpool lane on that commute, which was, mm. but yeah, look, it was slow. I mean, it was very, very slow. Anyway, so there's a new version and it's better in just about every way. Well, there's actually two versions or more accurately, there's two batteries to choose from. The entry level fella is a bargain and is priced at the equivalent of about 24,000 bucks US. And for that chunk of coin, you get a 24 kilowatt hour battery that's gonna give you a range of about 115 miles. What, you looking for more? Well, Fiat's got you covered. For some extra cash, you can upgrade that battery to 42 kilowatt hours. And here, Fiat's claiming a 199 mile range. All right, quick note on those range numbers here. All of these numbers are based off of the Euro cycle, which is more or less like insanely optimistic. In real world driving, expect those numbers to be a little bit closer to like 90 miles for the little fella and about 150, 160 for the big boy. Both of which are fine, not great, but fine, you know, pretty good. And for reference sake, the last gen Fiat 500e, the one I had maxed out at about 85 miles of range, which was fine for like 90% of the time and a little bit scary for like 8% of the time and well Just kind of terrible about 2% of the time look it's not fun running out of juice only happened to me once And yeah, it's a little awkward to knock on the front door of some random dude's house and ask him for an extension cord But what else are you gonna do right anyway I came back the next day dropped off six or so square in my book Okay, so charging. Now, both models have an onboard 11 kilowatt charger for regular level two charging, which is actually pretty good. The little guy's gonna take about two and a half hours to charge from zero to 100%, while the big boy battery's gonna take you just over four hours. And then there's fast charging. And things here are a little bit different. Like the little guy's capped at 50 kilowatts, while the big boy's capped at 85 kilowatts. The results though, both of them are roughly gonna take about a half hour to get from 10% to 80%. All right, so what's this thing like to drive? Well, it's better than the outgoing model in just about every way. Because the new guy is a purpose-built electric car, everything was designed and engineered from the get-go to work and fit just right. And oh yeah, one bizarre thing about the old model was this sort of kind of oddly high seating position, which I'm very glad to see has been fixed for the new one. All right, cool. Well, what about the power? So. Well, not the best news here. Like the smaller battery has an output of, well, get this, 92 horsepower. Yep, 92. And that'll get you to 62 miles an hour in a sort of painfully slow and, I don't know, mildly dangerous nine and a half seconds. Yeah. Oh, and top speed, how's 84 miles an hour? Aha! But there's the big battery version of this fella, right? That'll be the quick one, right? Not so fast there, race, so it does make some extra power, but not that much extra. We're looking at about 116 horsepower, and that'll shave about a half second off that zero to 62 time. So 
Top speeds also improved, well, a little bit to a less awful 93 miles an hour. All right, look, yeah, I'm sort of making fun of these performance numbers, and yeah, I wouldn't want to exactly attempt any long distance high speed traveling in these. I mean, I don't know, anybody who's driven through Eastern Utah knows exactly what I mean. Anyway, these are city cars. City cars, they you know, do okay on the freeway from time to time, but like, don't push it. If you do the majority of your driving in the city, these power and acceleration and top speed numbers, well, they just shouldn't concern you like at all. Like around town, these things are gonna feel much, much quicker than these numbers say. And as you know, that electric car torque just comes instantly and it's deceivingly powerful. Now, keep in mind, there's a pretty good chance that they're gonna make in the Barth version, which, I'd be pretty excited about. Now, you don't need much, as this thing has never really been about all out speed, but it just needs some power. It just does. I mean, figure out how you can get 250 horsepower out of one of these, and now we're talking. All right, so on to the inside, and things are generally pretty nice here. And like the Italians have pretty much always done cool interiors, and They've sort of just got it right here and look now i'm not going to break down the differences between all the specs as these will likely change by the time they come stateside but a quick example here in europe while the middle and upper trim versions come with a decent size 7 inch or 10 inch infotainment screen the base model comes with a smartphone cradle yeah i don't see that happening here but then again what do i know right Look, in general, this thing is just really well designed, and for a little fella, I think they did a very nice job, actually. It's very much an evolution rather than a revolution, but that's what you'd expect from an icon shaped like this. I mean, check out how rad these old Fiat 500s are. I mean, look at this. Yes. Yeah, it's like the Italian Mini, right? It's awesome. All right, speaking of Mini, this guy pretty much directly competes with the electric Mini, so, the Mini's a bit bigger and a bit more usable. The Mini's faster and has like a higher quality interior and it's maybe a little bit more fun to drive, but the Fiat is cheaper and it has more range and it has much more range if you go with the bigger battery version. So that's the brand new all electric Fiat 500. Personally, I think it'll find buyers here in the States and plenty in fact. I think there's a real appetite for smaller electric cars right now. And I'm not sure what's holding Fiat back from recommitting to this market. So they already have a dealer network in place and people are sort of already familiar with Fiat and the brand and the 500. Yep, Fiat still sells new cars here, but check it. If you go to the website, yep, they sell a grand total of one model here and it's pretty forgettable. So, hey, write your congressman or woman and let the, you know what, on second thought, just leave a comment below, simple question, should Fiat commit to bringing this thing here? I say yes, how's about you?